These are Russian nuclear bombers built during the Soviet era, specifically the 295 and the 222M. A little history lesson, during the Cold War, American planes, primarily the B-52 bombers, played a crucial role with at least 12 aircraft, would take turns to fly, thus remaining airborne almost 24 hours a day. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Soviet Union's only nuclear bomber, the 295, had to return back due to its limited range considering there were no refueling capabilities. This led to an arms race between the two superpowers. In response, the U.S. developed the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, the B-1 Lancer, and the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bombers, which are billion-dollar aircraft. The Russian answer to the arms race was the 2160, also known as the White Swan. This is one of the largest supersonic aircraft, capable of launching around 16 crews and hypersonic missiles, and its older variant, the 222, features swept-wing characteristics, also known as a carrier killer. We will also look at a scenario exploring what happens when several nuclear weapons are dropped and the resulting effects on the countries due to the nuclear dust fallout, so stay tuned to all in the video ahead. As stated, Russia has different types of nuclear-capable bombers, namely the Tupolev of 22 supersonic plane. Here is the White Swan, the Tupolev of 160. And finally, the contra-rotating propeller Tu-95, which will be in service until the year 2040. This is the nuclear-capable Tu-22M, also known in Russia as a carrier killer because they can destroy American nuclear aircraft carrier. The Tu-22 is a big, sleek aircraft, built mostly of aircraft aluminum alloys with a dart-like body structure and swept flight surfaces. While flying at low altitudes, the wings are spread open to create lift, while at supersonic speeds, the wings are retracted to give it an aerodynamic structure. It has twin Dubrin and VD-7M afterburning turbojets, with one on each side of the tail fin that can fly up to 4,350 miles, which translate to 7,000 kilometers without aerial refueling. But the Russian wants to compete with the famous B-1 Lancer to make up for this range. They built the 2160, reporting named Black Jack, which can fly up to 7,500 miles. This is around 12,000 kilometers without aerial refueling. It is powered by these four afterburning turbofan engines located on both sides of the wing. As the older version, it also has an integrated low-wing configuration with a variable swept wing feature. These high-lift devices include slats, double-slotted flaps, spoilers, and flaperons used for roll control. Interestingly, the older 295 can fly up to 9,400 miles that is around 15,000 kilometers without aerial refueling, which is much greater in distance but slower in terms of speed. The Black Jack is capable of carrying 6K H-55MS nuclear strategic cruise missiles, codename AS-15 Kent, inside its weapons bay on a rotary launcher. Further back, there are two weapons bay that can carry an additional eight nuclear-capable missiles in this section, such as the short-range KH-15 nuclear missiles. This brings the total to around 14 missiles in one single aircraft. Notably, the Tu-160 generally does not carry weapons payloads under its wings and design choice made intentionally to maintain speed and stealth. Similar to the Tu-22M, the Tu-160 has enormous wings that can open to create lift, the port wing's actuator allows the variable geometry outer tapered wings to sweep back from 20 degrees to 65 degrees, providing high-performance flight characteristics at both supersonic and subsonic speeds. This impressive performance is made possible by four Samara NK321 turbofan engines, each providing a maximum thrust of 25,000 kilograms, which translates to around 55,000 pounds. The engines are installed in two pods under the wing shoulders, with the air intake incorporating an adjustable vertical wedge. This technique allows the Tu-160 to reach speed of around 2,220 km per hour, which translate to Mach 2 speed. The 222M is also a great bomb truck. It can carry a load of up to 50,000 pounds when loaded to maximum capacity. It can carry around six units of KH-15 short-range nuclear missiles in the weapon bay. Alternatively, it can carry older conventional bombs such as the FAB 1500 unguided weapon system. While the updated variants of the Tu-22M can carry four Kinzhal hypersonic missiles 
on both sides of the wings and near the exhaust structure. Known as a carrier killer, the Tu-22M can fly close to the sea, miles away from the target, and release its four hypersonic missiles one after the other. These extremely fast missiles can fly very close to the surface. The aircraft carrier's defense system might respond with the Sea Sparrow missiles located at both the front and back, potentially destroying one or two of the incoming missiles. However, the last line of defense consists of the Gatlin guns located on the aircraft carrier. These guns serve as the final closing support system and might be able to destroy one or more hypersonic missiles. Suppose even one Russian Kinzhal missile manages to sneak through the American aircraft carrier's defense system. In that case, it can seriously damage and disable the operations of this billion-dollar floating airport, hence the name Carrier Killer. But what is a hypersonic missile? A hypersonic missile is any projectile that travels at 5 to 25 times the speed of sound, which is Mach 5 and above. These missiles are extremely fast and much harder for surface-to-air missile defense systems like the Patriot missile to target. They can also travel in a zigzag or random paths to confuse radar tracking. There are many kinds of hypersonic missiles such as the American air-breathing scramjet missile, which is still under testing. However, it has an astronomical cost of $15 million or more for one missile. On the other hand, the Kinzel costs around $4 to $5 million. However, this is not a suitable comparison since the American missile can reach speeds of around Mach 15 to 18. Comparing this to a person will help you understand its size, and it is really huge. Let's look at its cross-section. This is what we believe it might look like, so take this animation with a grain of salt. Starting from the bottom, there is the ejection pod. The second part consists of steerable fins attached to jet vanes. The third part of the missile is the rocket motor. This is the guidance section of the missile. And the last part is the warhead section or nuclear weapon, which weighs around 500 kilograms, translating to approximately 1,100 pounds. All this engineering propels the missile to an astonishing terminal speed of Mach 12, which is around 14,700 kilometers per hour or 9,207 miles per hour with a range of 2,000 kilometers or 1,242 miles. The T-95 weapon system can carry a total of 8 KH-101 missiles under four double missile pylons, in addition to 6 KH-55 missiles in the internal rotary missile launcher. The KH-101 is a long-range standoff weapon. It is carried and launched by this bomber aircraft, which is larger and heavier than the KH-55, but retains a similar design with a drop-down engine. Externally, it has some similarities with the US AGM-158 air-launched cruise missile, though the Russian missile has a significantly longer range. This missile is armed with a conventional or tactical nuclear warhead and has a range of 3,000 kilometers, depending on the version. While the missile weighs between 2,200 to 2,400 kilograms and can carry a 400 to 450 kilogram warhead. As the name suggests, nuclear bombers are aircraft designed to deliver nuclear weapons. Let's take a look at how they might work. The three planes can work together as nuclear and attack aircraft. In stage one, the 222M can sweep in and target enemies using KH-22 or 32 long-range supersonic anti-shipping cruise missiles or the Kinzel, specifically designed to engage U.S. Navy supercarriers. Meanwhile, the Tupolev 295 can be positioned as a command and control center, while also striking less defended infrastructures like the usual communication towers. This slows down the enemy response in the battlefield. Finally, the 2160 Blackjack, also known as the White Swan, would launch cruise missiles once in range. These missiles would travel low and slow under enemy radar to reach their targets. This tactic is typical for all bombers in a nuclear war scenario. The 2160 can open its weapon bay doors and release nuclear cruise missiles one after another. These cruise missiles deploy their wings when dropped and it can fly towards their targets, creating a nuclear explosion upon impact. However, the aftermath of such an attack can cause a nuclear fallout. When a nuclear weapon detonates dust mixed with radioactive fission products, 
are drawn into the detonation's radius, even spreading towards the attacker's own country and people. This nuclear dust can spread all through Europe, Russia, China, and even the rest of Asia if this happens to explode mid-air. This creates a situation where nobody wins as it affects a lot of people, including those who initiated the attack. We make original videos from scratch, so please do subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.